What is up guys? My name is Lex. Welcome back to the vlog. Today we're going on a mini road trip to the west coast side of Flo What are you doing back there, buddy? We're going to the west coast side of Florida. We're going to be playing at a new location for this vlog, Bonita Springs Poker Room. Hopefully the action's good and we run good. We're going to be playing some 25510 depending on what games they run. He's really not interested in my intro. Hopefully you run good. I think I already said that. Either way, let's get to the action. Let's go. Here we go, guys. Traveled about two hours to get here. We sit down with a 2-5 game, buying in for $1,000. There's a limp and another limp before the cutoff makes it $20. We look down at pocket nines on the button, and I end up making the call. We go four ways to the flop. $85 in the skillet. The flop comes out queen, nine, eight, rainbow. We end up flopping middle set. When it checks to me, I put out a $60 bet, and only the early position limper makes the call. We're heads up to the deuce of diamonds on the turn. Pretty big brick here. Now there's two flush draws, a diamond and a spade draw. The early position limper does something I was not expecting him to do. He leads out now. He bets $60. A very interesting line by this opponent. I would expect him to check most of his range here. Looking to check raise if he had a really strong hand like a straight, two pair, or a set. So whenever he leads here, I put him on mostly one pair of hands like queen x, like queen jack, queen 10, or possibly a pair and a flush draw. So I'm going to raise it up here for value. Looking to jam almost every river. I raise it up, I make it $220. How much more is it? Flop the set, but I feel like he's got a straight already. I raise it up to $220, and my opponent basically snap jams all in. I asked the dealer to count out the chips just because I'm unfamiliar with the chips here. I don't know how much he has behind. Once she tells me it's around $400, I don't think I can ever fold here. Obviously, I'm losing a jack 10, and his line is pretty strong. He let out on the turn and then jammed all in over my raise, but no way I'm going to be folding a set here. I end up making the call. A massive pot here going to the river, which is a spade. Not the best card. My opponent shows pocket eights for a set, and we show pocket nines for a higher set. What a cooler there. We end up winning a pretty big pot, our first hand of the night. Now we're up about $700 right off the bat. We win and lose some small pots before this hand comes up where there's a button start out of 10. The big blind calls. I have pocket kings in middle position. I raise it up to $40, and only the big blind makes the call. We're heads up, 10, 6, 4, 2 diamonds, pretty good flop for us. When my opponent checks to me, I put out a $50 bet, and unfortunately, he has nothing to call me with and ends up making the fold. I have my name on all the lists here, and around 7.30 at night, they end up opening up a 2-5 deep stack game, which is exactly what I wanted to play. I head over to the table and buy him for $2,000, and immediately, there is a three-way all-in, a $6,000 pot. These guys are not afraid to gamble, not afraid to play big pots. This table is going to be wild. The action is going to be crazy. First hand we play here, it's 2, 5, 10, 20. There's a double straddle on. This game is massive. There's a raise to $80. I have pocket jacks on the button, and I decide to just make the call. And my reasoning behind this is that the initial raiser is a very tight player, and there's some players in the blinds that I want to play hands with. I'm also on the button, so I'm going to have the best position throughout the hand. So I make the call, and we end up going four ways to the flop. The board is queen, nine, ten, rainbow. We end up flopping second pair and an open-ended straight draw. When the blinds end up checking it over to the initial raiser, he decides to check, and I think on this board multi-way, I think a check is best, so I end up checking, going to the turn, which is the ten of diamonds, bringing in a flush draw, and pairing the middle card. When the action ends up checking in me again, I feel pretty good about my hand. I want to make a bet here, but I wouldn't be betting for value. There's not many value hands that can call me that are worse than my hand, but I can bet for protection. I can bet to try to get people to fold ace high and king high hands with overcards or possibly players with flush draws. So I put out a bet. I make it $200. And looking back, I think I should be making it smaller here, probably around 150 bucks. It folds to the initial raiser, who surprisingly makes the call for 200 when this player checks the flop and then check calls the turn, I actually put him on the exact same hand that I have, pocket jacks. I think he'd be playing it exactly the same way. He might have ace king, but I think he'd be c betting that on the flop. When the river comes off a break and he checks it over to me, I don't think I can get value from any worse hand. So I end up checking it back. He shows king queen for top pair. I show pocket jacks and they are no good. Losing a small pot there. Moving on to the next hand where there's a $10 straddle. I have five four clubs in the big blind and call. Now an action player raises it up to $55. I want to be playing pots with him, so I end up making the call. We flop two pair on jack, five four, two hearts, a pretty wet board. When I check to my opponent, he puts out a $60 bet, and I'm going to be putting in a check raise here. 
I end up settling on a check raise of $200. My opponent thinks for about five seconds and jams all in for $1,000. I end up making the snap call and at this card room, if you want to run it twice, you have to show your cards on the flop or the turn. So I end up showing five four of clubs for two pair and my opponent shows seven eight of hearts for a combo draw, a straight draw and a flush draw. We've got a hold here for a $2,000 pot. Unfortunately, the first run out is not good for us. A heart comes in, but the second run out gives us a full house right away. So we're going to end up chopping up a $2,000 pot here. In the first 30 minutes of this game, there's already been about five or six all-ins. This table is crazy. There's two, five, 10, 20 double straddles on. I got to buckle up and get ready. Right. Put me on the block. It's going to be a good one, I think. I think it's going to be a good one. The $20 straddle's on. I raise it up to $60 with Ace-5 of Diamonds and end up getting a call from the straddler. Says he wants to give me action for the vlog. The flop comes out. Ace-Queen-5. We flop two pair. He checks it over to me. I put out a $50 bet and he ends up making the call. As if two pair wasn't good enough. How about a full house? The turn card is a five. We make a boat. My opponent checks to me and I want to ramp up the betting here. Hopefully he has a hand like an ace or possibly a queen he wants to get sticky with. I decide to bet. I make it $225 and he snap folds. Maybe that'll make it, I don't know. Nope. Probably not. Nope. Not a big enough pot. Not enough banter. As if we didn't have enough money in their pre-flop. In this hand, there's a 2, 5, 10, $20 double straddle and a $50 blind raise. I have king jack offsuit in the cutoff. I end up raising it up. I make it $150. The small blind makes a call and so does the blind raiser. So we end up going three ways to the flop. Jack, nine, deuce, rainbow. Pretty great board for us. We end up flopping top pair and a king kicker. Can't ask for much more in a $500 pot. When my opponents check to me, I want to be putting out a sizing here that they can call with worse hands like weaker jacks, straight draws, and nines, and possibly sevens and eights. I make it $175. Both of my opponents end up folding and we take down this pot. Smooth sailing so far, up about $1,500, but unfortunately, we hit a cold streak. We end up calling a 3-bet with King Jack offsuit by one of the action players. We flop second pair, and he flops top pair. We get it all in for about $450, and he ends up holding, so we end up doubling him up. In this hand, I'm the $20 straddle. The small blind makes it $60. I have King-Queen offsuit. I 3-bet up to $180, and he ends up making the call, flopping a gut shot on Ace-Jack-9, two hearts. He ends up leading out big here. He makes it $250, and I don't think I can fold just yet, so I end up making the call. The turn is a 9, and my opponent bets $500, and we fold. Next hand, I open up King-10 suited. I end up getting 3-bet to $225. I end up making the call and end up check folding on the flop. Next up, the $20 double straddles on. There's a raise of 75. I have ace jack of clubs in the cutoff. This can be a three bet or a flat. And this time I decide to just make the call before the small blind. One of the fun action players bumps it up. He makes it $250. The straddler makes a call. The initial raiser folds. And given the fact that I'm getting a pretty good price in position with a suited ace, I make the call for $250. Three ways with over $800 in the middle. We miss everything on a 10 high board. The initial raiser jams all in for $500. The initial straddler ends up making the call. We have a pretty easy fold here. We just keep bleeding chips. We are up around $1,500 at one point. Now we're down over $1,000. The action is not slowing down. I raise it up to $200 over a $50 blind raise with 10 nine of hearts and end up getting three callers. Flop is king, queen, seven with two spades. We flop a gut shot. Under the gun player just leads right out for $500. And once there's a call from under the gun plus one, I have a pretty easy fold, losing another pot. $20 straddle on the small blind makes it $110. I have ace, nine of hearts in the big blind and decide a three bet. I make it $260 and he ends up making the call. The small blind is one of those players who plays a ton of hands, but he does know how to play post flop. He knows what he's doing. The flop comes out king, queen, seven, two clubs. We totally miss. And when my opponent checks to me, I'm going to do a one and done C bet strategy here. I'm going to bet once. If my opponent calls, I'm just going to give up on this board. I bet $300 here, praying to take down a pot. I haven't won a pot in over two hours, probably down about $1,500 so far in the game for over $3,000. However, unfortunately, the small blind's not going to give up. He's not going to fold his cards. He ends up making the call. The turn pairs the board. It's another queen, and like I said on the flop, I'm not going to continue to barrel here. I'm just going to give up, going to the river, which is the three of spades, so the front door flush does get there. I'm hoping my opponent will check, and hopefully I'll win here with ace high, but that is not going to happen. He ends up putting out a bet. He makes it $500. I'm going to tell you guys now what was going through my head on this river bet. This opponent had been winning a ton in the session, but not many hands were getting to showdown. He was winning a lot by just betting big and not showing his cards all the time, so I wasn't sure if he was just making a ton of hands or if he was bluffing, and I definitely think this player is capable of putting in some big bluffs, so I was trying to figure out what kind of bluffs can he have on this river. He can have a hand like Jack-10 for an open-ender that missed. 
He can have a hand like 9-10 for a gut shot that missed. He could also call my flop bet with a hand like 5-6 with a backdoor straight draw and flush draw, or maybe even 8-9 suited with a backdoor and flush draw. I beat all those hands. However, I'm losing to any king, any queen, or obviously a flush. And whenever he bet on this river when the flush comes in, he's basically polarized to saying that he has a flush. I don't think he'd be betting a king for this sizing, and I'm not even sure if he'd be betting a queen for this sizing either. So I end up thinking for a while. I tank for over a minute and a half. I don't believe you. Awesome. I end up making the hero call with ace high for $500 and my opponent shows queen eight of diamonds for trips and now I just feel like a total idiot. I end up calling $500 on the river with ace high when I could have just folded and looking back at this hand, I think I played it pretty terrible on all streets. Back to preflop, I think I can just call here in position. I don't really want to be bloating a massive pot against a sticky player with a mediocre hand. And on the flop, whenever I 3-bet, I should just be checking this one back. I totally miss, and this board is going to smash his 3-bet. In call range, he's going to have a lot of pairs, straight draws, flush draws, and then middle pairs as well. So I should just be checking back the flop. And then on the river, when he leads out for $500, it's just always a fold. There's not enough hands that he can be bluffing with. I also block some of his bluffing hands. I want him to have like jack nine or nine ten for missed straight draws. I have ace nine, so I'm blocking those hands. I'm losing to a king, trip queens, a flush, and a full house. So obviously this is just a fold. Making the call here was a huge punt, but sometimes in poker, you're the hero. And then sometimes in poker, you're a big dummy. We've got a shake off of the tilt here for the last hand of the night, which is a $75 eight way bomb pot. I have king deuce off on the button and the flop comes out king 10 for rainbow. And when the middle position player ends up leading out for $200 here and it folds to me, I decided to put in a raise. He had been doing this in bomb pots with middle pairs, straight draws, bottom pairs, and even ace high. So I think I can be raising here for value. I don't need to make it too big. I make it $450 with my top pair. Another main reason for raising here is to take the betting lead in the hand. I don't want to take a ton of heat from this player on the turn or the river and have to fold out a better hand. So I raise it up, trying to take the betting lead here. If I need to, I can check back the turn and try to see a cheap free river. If I don't improve, the dealer ends up collecting the chips. His pot is pretty big so far. Going to the turn, which is an offsuit five. My opponent checks to me and I decide to check this one back. The final card is the nine of spades and now my opponent just leads right out for $300. Not the best card, it does bring in queen jack for a straight, but given the sizing, one fifth of the size of the pot, there's just no way I can fold my top pair here. So I end up making the call and my opponent tells me he has a 10. I end up showing my king for top pair and it is good to scoop over a $2,000 pot. The biggest pot we've won all night. We end up winning at the end of the night in a bomb pot. That is going to be it for us on this session. What a wild ride it was. So many swings, so many big pots. What a crazy action game. We end up racking up our chips, heading to the cage, and cashing out for the night. Alright guys, that is it for tonight's session. What a crazy, swingy ass game. We started off at 2-5, then we switched over to the 2-5 deep stack game with a $10 straddle, which then turned into a 2-5-10, $20 mandatory straddle. The action was off the chain. The game was huge. Unfortunately, I did not run too good. Couldn't really make any big hands. No aces, kings, queens, no sets, no straights, no flushes. I also played not the best either. Made a pretty bad call down there with ace high where I should have just folded. Made a couple three bets where I probably could have folded as well. It was getting a little out of line, but sometimes you just can't play the best and you try to learn from your mistakes and play better next time. In the game for $4,000, cashing out for $3,220 for a loss of a little over $700, which isn't too bad for such a big game, especially after our big $5,000 win last week. So I'll take it. If you guys like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below. New videos just like this coming out every single week. And until next time, I'll see you.